Congressman George Santos, who faces criminal charges, survived a vote last night to expel him from the House. Senior Congressional Correspondent Rachel Scott reports from Capitol Hill. Good morning, Rachel. George, good morning. And it was New York Republicans that made the case that Congressman George Santos deserves to be kicked out of office. But with his trial still months away, some members argued it was premature. Overnight, Congressman George Santos surviving a rare vote to oust him from Congress. The resolution is not adopted and a motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. 24 Republicans joining most Democrats to expel Santos, but the resolution falling far short of the two-thirds majority needed to pass. Santos defiant. I feel like due process is still alive. I feel like there's enough colleagues on both sides of the aisle here who understand that. The push to expel Santos was put forward by his fellow New York Republicans, pointing to his lies about his background, from his education and work experience to his religion and family history. He even falsely claimed his mother was in the 9-11 attacks. The number of first responders in each of our districts who still to today are dying from 9-11 related illnesses. This is not something you joke about, you lie about. It is unfit. Santos is facing 23 federal charges, accused of engaging in multiple criminal schemes, from unemployment fraud to lying to federal officials about his campaign finances. He denies it all. Why do you deserve to stay in office? Well, because it's not up to them, it's up to the people who vote. Prosecutors allege Santos falsely reported donating his campaign a half a million dollars, when he only had $8,000 in the bank and accused the Long Island Republican of stealing the personal identities of some donors and charging their credit cards repeatedly to fund his campaign. But even lawmakers who find all that concerning warn expelling Santos before his trial ends would set a dangerous precedent. Is there a scenario in which you would step down and resign? No. Nope. At all? Nope, I already told you that before, Rachel. I've been telling you that for 10 months. Republicans were also keeping in mind their razor-thin majority. They did not want to lose another vote. Even though this failed, those New York Republicans could still try to bring this to the floor again. The House Ethics Committee expected to provide an update on their investigation in the coming weeks, George. And Rachel, over in the Senate, Republican on Republican battle over this hole that Senator Tommy Tuberill had put on military appointees. George, this was a remarkable, intense fight that played out on the Senate floor. 61 military nominations brought to the floor and all 61 blocked by one single senator, Tommy Tuberville. He has remained dug in for months, taking issue with the Pentagon's abortion policy. But he was confronted by his own Senate Republican colleagues who argued that has nothing to do with any of this. They insist with one war raging in Israel, another war raging in Ukraine, that Tuberville is handing our adversaries like Putin a gift, George. Okay, Rachel, thanks. For Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.